a wonderful family. And now since I found all these other members, <laughs> I feel as though it's kind of enlarged. I just, my run regret is that Bobby and get to meet more of them. We did get to meet this, this one Corin, uh, who would be a half something or other. Um, but he, uh, his ancestor had made the, the woods for golf. And they said uh, that in, uh, they, they thought that uh, Greenbrier County or Louisville, I'm not sure which, uh, the, the hotel of the course is there. Now, I didn't, didn't get in the hotel. I don't know what it was like, whether it was real old, but so many things are old in the East that this probably has, was pretty well made and, and uh, is, is still standing. It, as I say, it's still a popular uh, place for vacations and things. Um, I wanted to ask you a little more about the garage. Um, from things I've been reading in the history that you wrote, um, mm -hmm. things about the house, that there's a, a bake oven out there and that they used to use uh, part of it for um, uh, wood storage in the winter time. And then there's a little room for uh, collecting ashes for soap making. And then also uh, a portion of it was used for smoking meat. Is that? I have no idea. No? I don't remember even writing anything like that. Oh, you don't? Okay, well. But I know there was, there were, there were a couple of little rooms, and we have paint in one of them, and they did bake once a week. I, I showed, showed you the, not the tins, the iron uh, pans. Uh, that they said they used to use out there, and there was some kind of an oven. But aside from that, I guess the thing I was most impressed with, maybe because Bob was the uh, um, license collection. He has everything from way back when. We used to go out when we had a day off, <laughs> I I usually went with him. And when we were living here, I didn't have to worry about it, at least at first, because Grandpa was always here. But uh, on the other hand, when we were in the first 10 years, I could just bundle the kids up and take them with me if they were little, and if not, I knew they were in school. so. I was really freer, in a sense. And then when we moved in here, it was a little more difficult because we had a hired man. And uh, there were six beds in the wash every week. <laughs> so I was thankful for automatic washers and all the things. The first six months, I went back. I called it up home and did it. I was the only one that felt bad about moving, I guess. The kids were so used to Grandma and her doing everything, and they were a little bit like Bob, glad to get home. <laughs> so the moving was quite a thing. But we had a lot of time. I, Cal didn't move in until you know, almost a year later. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little more um, specifically about the house, Lucinda. Um, do you know where on the property they found the clay to make the bricks, and then how many bricks they made? Well, they had a kiln come in. And they uh, originally, I think, 
grandfather probably by this time was farmer enough to know that the slough back here, which has all the trees and stuff in it, was not the greatest thing in the world uh, for a farmer. So they went back there and tried to make bricks. And they ended up with these kind of, uh, oh, they're blah looking, kind of grayish, brownish. They aren't, they aren't a good red. And so they went back of the horse barn, no, the cow barn, out in the, in the east field, and uh, took the land from there. And there's something about bricks, I don't know enough about it, but that you have to have quite a bit of iron in the soil. Now, whether that was the reason that these are so much better colored. So what they did was, in the laying of the bricks, they laid, they took the, the bricks they had already made that they weren't too satisfied with, and they put them in the, you, I don't know if you noticed the size of the walls, the thickness, I think you can see. I don't, you can't see it from here. There, you can see that door. And that's, that's the thickness of the walls all the way through, so. Uh, not all the way through, not in the kitchen. That's why I say, I think it was kind of like the old summer kitchen idea that you had this in introducing the people and they used it in the summer. But in this case, it was well enough built, and of course it had brick on the outside. But we, it doesn't have the high ceilings, which I guess is a blessing. But we always had trouble with the ceilings. But I think it was because there was no roof over it. I mean, where you have the, another story. But see, that's kind of like this porch out here. But that's just the conclusion I've drawn from that, that, that it was kind of an added on thing. And as I say, the windows, the window, I should say, there's only one window there. Along with that, I probably should mention this. Uh, they were very devout Christians and in uh, one of my I mean, Myron Amick's letters, I found this so very interesting. He had mentioned the fact that uh, Abraham Lincoln, during the war, this was while he was away fighting, and I'm sure he must have seen a lot, but they, he had mentioned the fact that Abraham Lincoln had declared a, a day of prayer and he felt that all good Christians should be praying for the end of the war and so on. And also, he, uh, he remembered the old days in Campton when he, he sat in the church, he told how, this might have been in another letter, but he, he told how it meant so much to him to be in the church where they where they worshipped. Uh, and if I, I think they called it the Old Stone School, but before the church was built, there, there's supposed to be, I think Dave said he, he showed somebody uh, the stones up in the woods where the church stood. And I suppose they spent like $2,000 or so for the church. Uh, I think he had a, I found a bill or something that had something to it. There was no basement under it. And uh, there's a window in the dining room we took from the inside. I think it was kind of an inside doorway. And they had this six or seven panels and Dave and his friend did some dividing up of the of the door and 
gave one one window to uh, Dexter and one to uh, Cal. See, Flora was, it was actually given to Flora, I guess. But we gave them, each one of them, so each one of us had a window. But they had been over in the old house and all kinds of things happened when you just put things away like that. And now what denomination, the, the windows come from the church? Was these, these windows did. And what denomination was the church? It was Methodist. And my father remembered coming here. He didn't, didn't remember the corns, I don't think, really. But that was when they'd take a buggy and, and take them because there was a, a church in, uh, what are they called, East Burlington. But they called it the Harden Church. Now, what the Harden Church stood for, I never did find out. But that was about five or six miles west of here, at least, on uh, the McDonald Road. I don't know that these roads were all named like that at that time, but they are now, so you could find it. And uh, that was what one church, and then the main church was in Plato, uh, Plato Center. But it was in the uh, old part of Plato Center, before the railroads went through. If you notice these back towns, most of them changed when the railroads went through. And Plato moved a half mile west. Now I guess it's moved back to the... <laughs> Everything's changed again. I suppose when you said, what, what have I seen changing? All the roads have changed so much. One of the interesting things about history, I find, is to see the direction the roads used to take. And, and now, you know, at Garfield Cemetery and all the trouble they're having about that. Well, when we used to go to my grandmother, we'd go down to Mongerson's, turn left, go about a six, sixteenth of a mile, I guess, and, and then go on Garfield Road, and then turn right and go back to where Beef Road comes in and follow Beef Road. Up. We only did that when the weather was pretty bad or something, but Christmas just sometimes. And but, how long ago was that, that you would take that kind of a route? Well, I suppose I was a kid. I was a kid once, <laughs> quite a long time ago, but I, uh, and was that by I would think it was in the 1920s. We had a car when we took that way. When we had to go with a sleigh or something for Christmas, we would go down to the Burlington, to the, what is now Silver Glen, to Swanberg Road, you know where Swanberg Road is? And then we'd go back to Lily Lake, and that was, what, Canada Corners. I'm sure you've heard of all these things. And then we'd go back Hanson Road to Anderson Road. And my grandmother lived just a stone's throw or so from the house of the cupola, it's still there. A cousin of mine is living in it now. And, uh, but that was the route we took. That was the shortest route. I think, I'm not sure. But the, you followed the road wherever it went. But then somebody was just asking me about how roads were, and I just wonder if a lot of these roads didn't have curves in them and stuff because there were trees fell and they turned up and went around and you had a big departure from it. Now, I guess you have to use your imagination 
when you think of history and how it's repeating because it never repeats exactly the same. And I'm sure our ancestors would have just collapsed to see the big network of roads that we have all over the country. But Could you talk about when electricity first came to this area? Who? Electricity, when they electrified. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we got ours in... I, I'm speaking from my own personal experience because I don't really know. Of course, I guess you could gather that by this time. But I don't really know when the corns got it. I think they got it a little later than we did. But it was in around 1930. And uh, in our case, we lived about a mile and a half from the main road, off the main road. And I remember they were, my folks were quite shocked to think that they had to pay $11 a month for electricity. <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the neighbors who lived beyond us didn't have to pay that much when they got it a little later, but they didn't get it when we did. And actually, you had, was a part of the process of building the line. Now that may be just a Scotch story. <laughs> Everybody has stories, I guess. But uh, I remember that. And I remember Cal telling about coming home from school and the house was all lit up. And when you, when you see what happens when the electricity goes off, we haven't had that problem of late because um, with the dairy, we've had a generator for quite a few years. But and we still have a little stove in the that we burn papers and stuff in. In the kitchen? Where is the stove? No, it's off the kitchen. Just across from the bathroom. It's, but uh, when we when we moved down here. I don't know if you met my mother, my nephew when he came in. He said, <laughs> he told how my sister had said, and he still got that old cook stove <laughs> in the kitchen. And it was a dirty thing because, you know, how the fireboxes would burn out. <laughs> I was always cleaning up after the, the firebox because it wasn't very good. But my mother was sick that year. And I used to get put things in the in the oven. It would they wouldn't burn. <laughs> They'd have all my do it. So I'd go up and, and clean her house up, and uh, sort of hit or miss. But anyway, she. It was just one of those things that you lived with. But Grandpa loved it. He'd come out in the fall. He was. He was in his, yeah, he was 80, I think, when Grandma died. And so he, he just loved that old cook stove. And I can remember, I think he cried <laughs> when they took it out. He went in his room. That room in there is a kind of a history room. You know, all the stuff in there. Now it's my room because I don't go up and downstairs. I don't go in any place very well. So when did you, you remodeled the kitchen here, if the kitchen had pretty much been original in its original state? Oh, no, I would say the kitchen. I, Grandma had the window, the little window that's above the, the counter there. Uh, she had that in there. Now, I don't know why, but when we first moved, they had a lot of, of these antique cupboards. Most of them are out in the garage. But we had two or three of those in the pantry. A and uh, of course the bathroom was put on. That took part of the garage. And Bob's office, which now has a computer in it, uh, is uh, 
a part of the garage. But uh, otherwise, any changes have been made. I remember a man, he was a friend of Bob's, came from Geneva, who was in Ivan something. He was from Europe. And he was admiring our old house. And he said, uh, but he said, and at that time we had uh, rugs that didn't cover the whole thing. And he said, but the first thing I do is to get rid of those hardwood floors. <laughs> I said, over my dead body. <laughs> if you ever had to clean the, the big wide boards. <laughs> But we have all hardwood floors, except in the kitchen where it's linoleum. But uh, otherwise, the house had all, all the wide boards. So under the carpeting here, it's still the wide plank floor? No, no, under the carpeting here is the hardwood. The hard, so it's the... the yeah, floor. people tell me that we should not cover the hardwood, but... They have not lived in a house with 12-foot ceilings and a and, uh, uh, cold wind that blows in from the southwest. Our best room in the house. It, it's great in the summer. We have, I think you probably read it in the history, 40 doors and windows in the house. And, uh, but that includes... Like that room in there has, you really should look at it to appreciate it because it, it, it is a beautiful room. But it comes October, you're glad to shut the door. And that's the enclosed, the enclosed room you're talking about. I mean, this this room that was yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want to step step up, just open the door. Oh, okay. You can look at it. You see what I mean, because... Oh, my. Oh, I see what you mean. And it's great when you're entertaining, and I don't do much of it anymore, but used to do a lot of it. Um. And it, it makes it it makes the whole house look bigger and better if you can keep the door open, get it back, and and hide some of the work that the kids have done on the not just the kids, I guess all the adults. When you stop to think that all the wood, the framework, but the they you better shut that. You'll be getting a draft on you. Thank you. You may have to. Our doors are well, a little you iffy. Get, you have to get the latch just right. That's uh -huh. the way it is with older doors, right? Definitely. <laughs> Everything's with, like older people. <laughs> Everything kind of wears out. But but I thought that would give you an idea of how much that meant to the house. But when we moved in here, uh, they had been, just been using it um, as a uh, bedroom. But in the summertime, that, that's fine. You've got all this air, the, as I say, all the doors. Three doors in the room and five windows. And you get a nice southwest wind. <laughs> it's a great place to keep your candy when you're making it <laughs> in, in the wintertime. But you hurry in and you hurry out. <laughs> um, how would you describe that room, Lucinda? Was it originally meant as the yeah, fancy it is a part of it. to the house? It was a part of the house. Well, you can see in the, in the picture. Not in that picture, but in that one. Right. Oh, it's one But of you the... see, it has no, it has no basement under it, and it has no uh, uh, story under it. 
our, our house actually stops at this wall. So the cold air does come in there. But do you suppose originally that was intended as like the fanciest parlor, the sitting parlor? In yeah, there? I'm sure. But I imagine they found out very early that with these cold winds, you had to shut it up. Uh, th that one on the east is the same thing, except that we've always used it, and then it has the kitchen over it. But now it was used in this sense. When, when Grandpa Cora, and I, I remember when I'd come here, um, Grandpa uh, always shut the door after him. And when we moved in, we had to explain to Dave, he was only four, that that was off limits. But Dave would get Grandpa's Montgomery Ward catalog or Sears Roebuck catalog, <laughs> pick out his Christmas presents. <laughs> Grandpa would help me. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever got anything, <laughs> but uh, it was it was worth trying. <laughs> but the other the other two, Bob was nine. He had his ninth birthday in the basement here. Bob, oh, that was the ping pong. Oh, if you're talking about how the ping pong room was a great room. When Bob was in high school, that's my husband. Uh, he and the hired man dug out under the basement. And they took out what is the basis of our basement, really, these great big stones. And uh, back in the old days, we used to call them niggerheads. You've heard that expression. But now you don't do it. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, when we first moved up here, we took one room, and we had a furnace, uh, although Grandma Corn was still, what did they call it? You had a furnace, but you had to tend to it. And, like a coal furnace or a, bo a boiler? A what? A, a boiler that you'd have to shovel the coal into, that kind of furnace? Uh, every so often, I think they had, I'm not sure. Oh, there was a name for it too, but I can't Over. think of it. A stoker? Basically. Stoker. If that if that was, I'm I'm sure that was, and I don't I don't know how it worked, but we had the furnace put in. See, we moved in 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 uh, September. Grandma died in July, and it took Grandpa the day six weeks to decide whether he could put up with three little kids, <laughs> and I know it couldn't have been easy. But uh, he had his own room, and it, it was a sanctuary. He could go in there and, and know that he wouldn't be interrupted, except on occasion when Dave would. But uh, the ping pong room was when the kids were growing up. Well, Bob liked ping pong, and then Cal came along, and Cal got really pretty good at ping pong. And so we did use the basement a lot. We aren't using it now. It's not in very good shape. The ping pong tables <laughs> have just disintegrated like everything else if you don't use them. So that's a part of the history I'd rather not repeat. <laughs>